Hello guys and welcome back to another Monday morning here on the flower farm and hopefully you can hear me okay because Rob's doing some stuff with the muck hill just to the side of me but hopefully the microphone will be picking up my voice and not what's going on next to me. Today I am in my back flower field because the cover crop behind me is in desperate need of being killed off before the mustard goes to seed and we're getting kind of a little bit closer to um, the danger stage now because the mustard is forming seed pods and it really needs killing off before um, we get mustard seeds all over the place. So my strategy that I've been using for killing off cover crops recently has been to either give it initial um, cut down with shears by hand just to make it easier for me to go over with the ride on lawn mower or the push mower depending on the size of the area of the cover crop and then I've been covering it over with a black sheet just to um, to further kill off those plants and to help the kind of um, cover crop get worked into the, the soil below. So just to make, doubly make sure that everything's dead um, and kind of worked down. So uh, today I think I might just chance it with the ride on lawnmower just to see if it'll go over it. Um, and I can start off high and work down lower um, just to try and um, kill it off. And even if it just flattens it down, um, I'm going to be putting that tarpaulin over the top of it anyway. So within a few weeks, that's going to be killed off and ready for planting if it was a bed that I was going to be planting into. But I don't think I'm going to plant into this bed. It's a very rocky bed that I haven't planted anything into before. Um, and I think what I would prefer to do is just to keep cover crop in it and see what happens. I don't necessarily need this space right now, so it might be interesting to just have like a area that's going to be beneficial, to be bringing beneficial um, organisms to the area. So uh, here we've got mainly mustard and phacelia. There is some um, vetch and some crimson clover um, dotted around here, but the main kind of success story of this cover crop has been the phacelia and the mustard and I have actually been picking the phacelia as well for my um, cut flower bunches it smells amazing the bees absolutely love it so if I can continue to kind of have a little bit of a set aside cover crop here then um, I can keep those going in a rotation and um, I'm going to be bringing lots of beneficials to the field um, to, which is hopefully going to help along all of the other things that are going along in this field so diversity is really something that I'm aiming towards here on the flower farm and obviously we are growing a diversity of crops anyway lots of different types of flowers but it's nice to get some kind of different things like the mustard the phacelia some different things in on the farm just to increase that diversity even further so I'm going to go and grab the lawnmower and see if we can get this chopped down with the lawnmower. <laughs> has been burned down now and the mower's made a pretty good job of it. I just went um, at the highest I could go and then just moved it down slightly but this area is pretty kind of uneven because a couple of years ago we brought a digger into the field to put some drainage in the field. It kind of created some ruts that we never managed to get kind of straightened out but I'd be interested to see if over time the addition of organic matter is going to help us with uh, a little bit more of a topsoil creation here in these two beds because they are very rocky. We have some kind of uh, black rock here. I don't think it's, it's not natural. It's been put here. I don't know why it's there to be honest, but um, it's not ideal for growing. It's very kind of rocky. So it'd be interesting to see if we can add organic matter and make it into a nice area for growing flowers because then that gives us a couple more beds to grow flowers in. 
So all that's left to do now is to cover it over with plastic sheeting and then it will be killed off probably in four weeks or so because the weather is really warm at the moment um, it's going to kill it off really quickly and then I'll probably once it's killed off I'll probably sow another cover crop straight into it just to get a late summer cover crop and we can bring those beneficials back into the plastic is on the bed now and that should be killed off within four weeks or so and it will be ready to sew again uh, depending on what I decide to do. I kind of don't ever have any long-term plans for things like this I'm just kind of winging it as I go along um, just depending on the conditions and how things work out. It's all still a learning process and um, things to do with farming are very unpredictable anyways so gaining experiences and seeing how things go and seeing what I can manage to take on on top of all of the other stuff that's going on on the flower farm so this kind of method of killing off a cover crop has worked well for me um, it, the last couple of times that I've done it so I'm happy to carry on doing it this way and if something better comes along and I'll try it and see whether it works but for now this seems to be working quite well and it's quite manageable on the scale that I'm on as well obviously if I was doing a, a super huge area um, any larger than this whole field for example then it just wouldn't be possible for me to do this kind of method so um, it's working for me at the moment and this the two beds that are next to it there's some cosmos planted here and some limonium suawarii next door those two beds were cover cropped over the winter as well as the one on the far side um, the one on the far side has still got the plastic cover on just because I haven't got anything to plant into that field just because of the uh, problems that I've had with seed starting and things this season so the cover is still on that however that bed suffers with problems with thistles a little bit more than these two beds have these two beds don't have any problems with thistles at all so f for me that is better off being covered otherwise the thistles are going to start making the way back up again if I sit down for long enough and have a think through then I probably won't even need um, that bed this season because I probably won't even be producing enough biennials to plant into that bed at the end there either so I could probably plant another cover crop in there this summer so that's something to think about in the next few weeks see whether I can get a quick summer cover crop in there what I'm going to do actually is going to I'm going to take you over there now and just have a look underneath that plastic because I haven't taken it off since February March time and it would just be interesting to see what it looks like underneath um, and see how that cover crop has broken down so this is the bed here that is um, that was cover cropped over the winter and it was killed off around March April time uh, so the cover crop has been on almost four months I would say so it should be looking well killed off under here Let's see if I can get the cover up there we go So there's kind of some straw material under there that you can see that is the um, residual material from the cover crop and the worms obviously help to create um, the soil structure by creating their burrows 
and um, it helps water to, and air to infiltrate the soil so that's going to be beneficial for plant and microbes. So yeah we'll keep that covered for a little bit longer because I have got um, a bit of a busy week ahead. I am heading over to Groundswell which is a regenerative farming show festival, a two day event um, that I'm going to this week um, so I haven't got a lot of time spared this week so I'll be probably looking at this next week and um, I'm going to have to order some more cover crop seed as well so it'd be interesting to kind of browse the different varieties and maybe try something new here on the flower farm. And I will keep you updated with Groundswell because I'm really interested in seeing the speakers that are there. There's lots of really interesting people that I'm looking forward to see, seeing, like Richard Perkins, Nicole Masters. Um, there's just too many names to mention, but I'm uh, going to try and do a little bit of filming because I would like to take you along to the show and um, show you what's going on because it's going to be really, really exciting. So I will catch you on the next one. Thanks so much for watching this video, guys. See you soon. Thank you.